IDA with me, Lieutenant Ray Hopperath, Lieutenant Mike Smith of the Plymouth County CPAC Unit. I'm just going to give you some preliminary information about what we have right now. This case is still very active and under investigation as we speak. But if you're on West Elm Street uh, in the city of Rock, the male victim was walking on the sidewalk where we are right now and was struck uh, on that sidewalk as she was just proceeding down here minding her own business. Upon arrival, the police found a man had been struck on the sidewalk and was suffering from serious injuries. He was transported to the Brockton Hospital, where he was subsequently pronounced dead at 8.40 a.m. His Mexican has been notified. Uh, the, the man that was killed today was a gentleman, 66-year-old John Buckley of Bridgeland. Approximately 100 feet across the road, the police located the vehicle that had struck the pedestrian, a white Mercedes SUV. The female driver, was extremely distraught, stopped at the scene, and remained behind to speak with the police. She requested medical attention. She was taken to Good Samaritan Hospital uh, for, what, for treatment of what appeared to be non-life-threatening injuries. We're not identifying uh, the woman at this point uh, because no charges have been filed as of yet. And like I said earlier, this case remains under investigation. State police detectives assigned to the Plymouth PA's office in conjunction with the Brockton Police, the State Police Cars Unit, and Crime Scene Services have been involved. Numerous eyewitnesses have been involved and been interviewed. The vehicle has been towed by the seat from the scene, and also the State Police are going to continue to run tests on the vehicle uh, to make sure that uh, the vehicle was functioning properly. Today was a really a tragic incident that occurred here. Um, I, it's a very busy time of the day. Uh, the Brockton District Court here, the Brockton Superior Court, there's two different um, homicide cases going on right now as we speak. It's just a very, very busy time. And what happened here today is a tragic incident for the poor victims and also for uh, anybody that may have happened in the area. I hope to have more information uh, as the investigation unfolds, but as you all know, it just happened a few hours ago, and this is what we have for present. If we have a question I can't answer, I'll try it. Do you expect do potentially it? charges could be filed? I'll wait for the investigation to Are you able to say, I know it's early, but are you able to say whether or not the driver had any sort of medical tissue? Or, or, I, mean, I don't know if you guys have figured it out yet, but you what she did. I think that it's, I think it's a fair statement to say that, as I said earlier, she was very distraught. She went to the hospital herself. And um, my understanding is, is that, like I said, she doesn't have any injuries per se. But they'll be looking into anything that potentially may be there as to how this uh, circumstance uh, happened. Tim, I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm not sure if you said this. What time is the victim called? Ritual. Is there anything that you can tell us about it? what did transpire and how, what occurred? And she was in the parking lot, uh, came up the, you know, the circumstance that, that did occur. Yeah, I mean, I mean, other than what you what you know already, she was in the parking lot, as I understand it, and the, the car was facing the other direction. And for whatever reason, the vehicle drove backwards up that initial incline, over the pathway, the, the, the other road that was there, up a subsequent pathway, through the shrubs, and hit uh, the poor gentleman who just happened to be walking down the street, minding his own business. And then the vehicle didn't stop until it came to rest on the building on the other side of West Elm Street. So I think there's a lot of work that needs to be done, and it'll continue, it'll continue to happen. And uh, when we have more information, We'll certainly let you know. How do you hit reverse for 100 to 200 yards and drive over someone? I think that's why it's such an interest, obviously. You go up to hills and you go at 100 to 200 yards and you plow over someone at such a high rate of speed. Well, I, mean, I think the rate of speed is something that's going to have to be put together also in conjunction with, I think we'll get a lot of information from a further review of the vehicle itself. And that's what's going on right now. Do you when know I, the driver because she's a defense attorney here locally? Do I know, do I know the person? I do not know. What happens with the review? So the look at the car obviously could, could have been a mechanical problem. Right? So what is the sort of review that they will do on that vehicle? Yeah, I think, I think the cars, you know, they specialize in the accidents that occur all throughout the Commonwealth. They're strained accident reconstruction individuals. And one of the things that they do is they work in conjunction with how the mechanics of the motor vehicle to see whether or not the, the car was functioning properly or whether it was not functioning properly. Was it an operator error? Was it a vehicle error? Uh, those are things that need to be looked at nowadays, and I think you know, with the, the detail of a lot of the cars, I think it does take a little bit of time, so we'll find out. Have you heard that this is a place where people congregate to gather for uh, community service through the court? Uh, do you know if this person was doing any community service? There was a trial van, a trial court van early, early this morning. Yeah, I don't have information on that right now, Ben, but um, like I said, I, as pertains to, uh, to 
been a victim of the case. It's a tragedy for him and his family, and I, I just feel for him. He retired. Do you know when he did it all? I, I, I don't have specifics. Okay. Was the victim dragged by the car? I don't know that as of yet, but um, obviously that will be part of where the investigation is. It's not accurate to say that the victim was a uh, good person or homeless? You know, I'm not going to classify him as anything at this point other than the fact that he was a guy walking down the sidewalk near the courthouse. He was in the wrong place at the wrong time. So when the, when the driver finally stopped her when she took the bill down, did she call 911? Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't know who called 911. I don't have that as yet. But like I said, they're trying to put everything together they can from this area, whatever may exist, whatever further information there may be, to make sure that... Um, we can get everything that we can to fully understand and appreciate what happened here today and what happened to her. Did she understand what happened? Because we saw her talking to investigators, I guess, like, cognitively. Did she understand? Or was she explaining or whatever? I mean, she didn't obviously leave the scene. She had a conversation with the police, but I said, like I said, that'll be part of the overall investigation. And that'll certainly be something that may, will come up, whether or somebody doesn't understand the gravity of the situation that they're facing. Uh, from the events that occurred. And what's the time frame you think of potential charges or no potential charges? I wouldn't put a time frame on it. I when the investigation is complete, we'll at that time look at all the facts, apply it to the law, and make that determination. Thanks, guys. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.